starting in 2010, I'll probably have a mic. Yeah, she's going to go probably back have the, the mic. Probably go and, and, and have people, let, let people, if they don't want to use a mic, they don't have to, of mm -hmm. course. And, and I'll have a timer. <laughs> you're out. Uh, you're done. Just remember, you have to introduce, if you have a mic up there, you have to introduce people. You have to, if you have to introduce people, you more or less have to say something nice about them. I just ran out of things to say. I'm going to have the holy document nice of the sign-up sheet, so I'll have a <laughs> name at least. So that's my holy document. So a holy document is a <laughs> the only document of the sign up sheet. <laughs> anyway, this is a poem I wrote while I was sitting <clears throat> in California. And I don't know what made me start to do this one. <clears throat> and it is called, and I wish I had an extra camera for the effect for it, um, this is called mm. All I Can Capture. I've read the New Testament, tried to plow through the old. I would read my sister's prayer book at night, in bed, just before sleep. Because if you do it then, just before you're drifting to sleep, maybe that's when he'll sneak in hmm. to catch you. So this is what I was supposed to believe. So I read and wait for God's hand to come down and take me. I waited for the metaphysical lightning bolt, but night after night, I would still turn off the light and sleep with only me to guide me. I decided to sep separate myself from the world, uh, placing a camera between us to look through my viewfinder and capture everything, create nice, glossy prints. I'd look for God in the refracted light coming down from the broken stained glass windows, delineated with lines of lead from the desanctified church. But I should know better to look for God in a desanctified church, like he would go there. <laughs> Pulling the camera to my eye, I would photograph the giant mural of Jesus and stand before the looming church organ, tap a few keys, listen for the reverberation before walking away. Then look for the divine majesty in the mountains, try to climb one of the Alps through the snow in my sandals, photograph the Tetons from my driver's seat in my car. But all I was doing was looking for God in plate tectonic shifts. <clears throat> but I look anyway, and I couldn't find him. And, and I look into the chasms of the Grand Canyon, even in Bryce and the arches, take pictures, hope for something more divine than nature's beauty to come to me from the deep down below. I'll even walk down the canyon if he won't come up to get me. I'll go to him if he's hiding. You wanna, you want me to meet you halfway? <clears throat> Fine. I'll even look up to the sky, photograph the clouds, the moon, but even the moon is slipping away as its orbit from Earth pulls it away from me one and a half inches every year. Even the heavens are getting farther and farther away from me. So I've gone toward the Arctic Circle, photographed the dancing, prancing, majestic beauty of the Aurora Borealis, stood huddled, shivering from the frigid Alaska air. But I know better. Geomagnetic aberrations are beautiful, but not godly. I've even photographed Michael Jordan playing basketball or George Michael singing on stage. But whenever I see pop stars and sports icons thank God for their successes, I never catch him on film. All I can capture is human talents and ability. I've looked to the majesty of nature. I've looked to the majesty of man. I've taken my camera pointed, shot, tried to catch him, tried to get a glimpse of God, a shadow, even an illusion, but I couldn't even find that. <laughs>